The past 30 minutes of gameplay have yielded an astonishing combination of developments, from the burgeoning of the Sundrian Navy on one end to the discovery of a hidden star system with multiple Gaia planets, inhabited Gaia planets, as you can see here, on the other. Hello Legion, this is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more Stellaris Galactic Paragons in our High Dominion 2 series. I noticed something kind of clever about this right as I was starting to record. This is Sol 10. Think about that for just a moment. Or Sol 10. So it's the 10th planet, <laughs> if we're counting Pluto, from the Sol system that's been stolen and hidden in the Dacha system by whatever force brought these planets together. So we're in the process of building a starbase right now. It's going to be done right as we begin the episode. I'm going to stay on speed two, but we complete. are rapidly approaching a point where we are going to be able to declare war on the Urians. Further expeditions into the labyrinth have yielded varying, at times unnerving results. On one occasion, our researchers were in for mere seconds and could give no answer as to why they turned back so quickly. On another, they were gone for weeks, but came back seemingly younger than they had left, and with year-long gaps in their memories. Some groups returned in a, in a better physical state than they had left, others bore fresh scars of serious injuries. Over time, the sign at the entrance has changed, too. Enter at your own risk became danger of death, and finally, warning, warning, do not enter the labyrinth. If you do, the planet will explode. In a macabre touch, Dominion skeletons adorn the walls, though exactly where they came from is not apparent since there have been no recent unexplained disappearances. It is not clear what further study will bring. As our researchers point out, we have no way to confirm or deny the warning stated on the sign. It is, however, becoming ever harder to find volunteers to enter the labyrinth, worrying. So our current approach will now cost an additional 10 unity per month. Well, that's a shame. All right, so we've finished here. Let's go ahead and build the, actually, no, let's build the observation posts first. Stop everything, build observation posts, then mining posts, then research stations. I want to learn what's going on here. It looks like these planets are in an early space age. So, you know, I don't want them to ascend to a point where they can be a problem for me. So, I mean, because I'm, I'm focused on other things, okay? We're, we're in the middle of building up a fleet so that we can attack these guys. We're going to try and keep it that way. All right, we have improved deflectors researched. Oh, hey, look what we got. Well, that's good timing. Yeah, let's go for it. Let's go ahead and research cloaking devices while we're staring at that option. Now, our science ship has some additional orders. It is going to check out the anomalies in this area. That's probably a Cybrix anomaly, if I had to guess. And we also have a science ship that is on the way to check out that anomaly, which is also very likely a Cybrix anomaly. We are terraforming multiple planets because we finished terraforming in the last episode, too. So let me go ahead and give the order to upgrade these ships because I want better shields. Absolutely. We're in the process of building our first destroyers and frigates. We're going to be over on naval cap as a result, Technology secure. which is a little bit dicey, given that we are already in kind of an energy deficit. Let's see what we can do here. Oh, so many good choices. Why would you do this to me? Leader capacity, plus one. Okay. I want gene clinics, but I also want leader capacity plus one. That will actually resolve that issue. And it could potentially... Hang on, let's look at this. I want to see what their upkeep is. Up okay, so there's a certain upkeep, upkeep excuse me, to unity. So we'll have more unity per month if we overcome that. All right, they've insulted us. Yeah, they're, they're really starting to ratchet up the uh, hostility. They're probably gonna declare on me before I have a chance to declare on them, to tell you the truth, which I don't love. I genuinely don't love that. I'm gonna go for gene clinics. I can't pass up that opportunity. It's gonna be done very soon. So here's what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna let these upgrades finish and I'm gonna declare on the Urian Sacred Covenant because I feel like we kind of have a short window to catch them by surprise. 
and potentially even do some damage, maybe even take over some colonies. All right, so it looks like our frigate was built. We are over now on naval capacity, as was expected. Upgraded. But that's going to be slightly problematic. Bridge Between Worlds. The pre-FTLs of Dacha are somehow more adept with hyperlane theory than we are. Every one of their worlds are linked to each other through an artificial hyperlane network. These lanes are used to transport necessary resources like food or building materials to their other worlds just using planet-bound trains, and we have no idea how they did it. A request for more scientists to study these worlds has been approved, though judging by the activity at their planetary listing posts, we are not the only ones looking at aliens. All right, so they know we're here, basically, is what the game is telling me. I'm just looking for potential sources of energy at this point. Our Naval Logistics Office is building at the, at the Sugenia Station, so that's going to help with our naval capacity, which should resolve the current energy shortage. But I think we're still building additional ships, so might not help that much. I don't think it's actually going to give me four more points of naval capacity. A departure. Contrary to its warnings, the labyrinth's disappearance did not destroy Elbicon Colony. Instead, its departure was quite unremarkable. From one way to the next, it was from one day to the next, it was simply gone. A message was left behind. We thank you for so kindly allowing us to study the beings of your dimension. It has proven most useful to our endeavors. Fortunately, you proved sufficiently fascinating to the Ministry of Extra-Dimensional Security for them to provide us funding for a smooth exit. As a token of our goodwill, we leave you a minor space-time anomaly at the site of our laboratory. We help it will prove diverting. Or we hope it will prove diverting. So this adds a space-time anomaly, which gives a space-time anomaly researcher job. And we get another one every for any 25 pops. So remind me what that does. Let's take a look at this. I'm going to unpause it so this can actually show up. I don't actually remember where the job was or where, where the space time researcher was. Here it is. Okay, so it produces. Okay, that, that's interesting that it shows no dark matter, but it's physics research and, and uh, engineering research primarily with a decent upkeep. Yeah, actually a pretty expensive upkeep, although ps, pretty similar to what a typical researcher would be. So I guess that's not too bad. All right. So it looks like this fleet is done. We are in the process of upgrading this fleet. I just want to go ahead and get this fully done so I can declare Crushed Cruiser. The shattered remnants of a cruiser-sized starship can be detected in a decaying orbit deep inside the atmosphere of Rangshin 3. It appears to have ventured far into the gas giant's atmosphere, perhaps in a desperate attempt to escape a pursuer, only to be crushed by the atmospheric pressure. The vessel is too deep to be salvaged, but a structural scan of the wreckage has provided us with some interesting engineering data. A remarkable vessel. All right, so that actually was not a Cybrix anomaly. Now we are going to finally study these worlds here. Who watches the watchers? <laughs> That's a good reference. We built an observation post around Helito 1 to study its inhabitants, only to realize that the Habentes are the ones studying us. They are fully aware of the existence of other alien species and have quickly noticed the existence of our scientists and drones. Our previous activity in the solar system must have alerted the Habente unified worlds of our presence. Keep our, keeping our existence hidden is meaningless at this point. Acknowledged. Habente Unified Worlds. Oh, is this how you communicate? We've been watching you ever since you entered through the hyperlane, but couldn't figure it out. Isn't it dangerous to travel in those metal boxes? It seems like we could learn a lot from each other so that... So if that is your intention, feel free to stay. If you wish to claim our home, be aware that we are not helpless. Hmm. There are splintered species. Fanatic, egalitarian, pacifist. How would the High Dominion of Sindar respond? You believe yourself an advanced civilization. 
How quaint. Yeah, let's be a little bit arrogant about it. The news that we have made formal contact with an intelligent yet undeveloped civilization has shaken our society to the core. Leaked footage of these bizarre creatures is spreading through media outlets across the high dominion of Sindar, and many citizens have been gripped by panic. Rioting has been reported in several cities on Sindar Prime. These aliens are far below our own level of technology. They have not yet developed spaceflight. For all our sakes, let us pray they never will. Indeed. So, they say they're not helpless. What does that mean? Do I need to wait to declare war here? Like, hang on. So, the combination of circumstances that I mentioned at the beginning of the episode is... It's kind of... It's kind of an inconvenient combination of circumstances because because now I'm feeling like if they're in an early space age, I might not have a ton of time on my hands before they become a bigger problem, but I need, 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 need to take care of this problem over here first. All right, their fleet power is pathetic compared to ours. So that's an indication that I probably need to go ahead and pull this trigger. Vessels upgraded. All right, now it's telling me in classic Solaris style that my... Oh, nice. Then my fleet is not fully upgraded, even after I just gave the order to fully upgrade it. Okay, let's reinforce the fleet now. Our spymaster watching over the Yuri and Sacred Covenant reports the surprise successful acquisition of a new asset. A sympathetic contact will be of service to our operations as and when we need them. All efforts have been taken to ensure that this new contact is genuine. Protocols have been established which seek to minimize the risk of potential double agents, for example. Excellent. All right. Well... So, we're over on Naval Cap. We did gain a little bit. We're still three over, and we're building an additional ship, I believe. We're terraforming three planets. That will be helpful once we have them, but it will be hurtful initially. It'll be harmful to our energy economy. All right, we're going to explore Ulkad, and we're taking care of a number of observation posts. There's going to be no energy from this, so all of these stations are going to have upkeep and add to the energy crisis, unfortunately. What I really need... Hmm. Yeah, pulling this fleet away, I pretty much have to just declare war and take some systems that will give me additional energy, hoping that this will be enough. Both of these, well, one of them has energy, so if we take control of that, we should be good. Let's go ahead and get ready for it, because I don't think we can afford to wait any longer. I'm going to keep my fleet pretty close together, and I am going to go ahead... This is going to be a little bit dicey for a bit, because at least I'm sitting on a decent amount of energy in the background, but we're going to have a deficit here for a moment while we're in this war. But this is our chance, I think, to do damage to them. So we have this transport fleet that we've already trained, which I frankly forgot about, so that's handy. Let's have the transport fleet hang back in Mufrid. All right, they're headed to Ascomia, and thankfully that system is a good launching point. What's, what's this? What do we have? Gene clinics, nice. I'm going to go ahead and unlock the Zeno Hydraulic Mastery. I, I tend to put off tile blocker research, and right now it just seems like it's a clear opportunity. Ooh, the second starter has another... What upgrade do you have? I just fully upgraded you. They must have had a... There must have been a ship that was already being built that was of an old... Like, an older design. I must have made some changes, which the game shouldn't allow that, but... Anyway, be that as it may, let's see what we can do here. We have, it seems, some amenity issues on this planet. Although we have gene clinics now, and gene clinics actually provide amenities. So let's go ahead and build a gene clinic on Enthrus Mandate. That seems like the obvious choice. It doesn't directly address our energy problem, but... What have we here? Okay, we have another archaeological site in Ulkad. That's very nice. I want our archaeologists to have stuff to do. 
we discovered an alien ship adrift among the asteroids surrounding E9RT-668. It is not responding to our hailing signals, whether this is due to it being unable to interpret our signal or perhaps some other reason we do not know. Science Officer Korb, daughter of Dirk, recommends that a construction ship be dispatched to tow this stricken vessel out of the debris field. If left untouched, there is a risk the alien ship may be crushed by the asteroids. A special project has been issued to rescue and investigate the ship. Um... Situation log okay. updated. Sure. Sure. Let's go ahead and do that. We have a construction ship literally here, so let's just research that. Meanwhile, is this upgrade happening? Or are you... What are you doing? Oh, you're building a frigate. Okay. So yeah, we are over on Naval Cab, basically. Upgraded. Yeah, that's what happened. The frigates that were queued up for construction in the previous episode, they were all still being built. Vessels upgraded. There we go. Well, now we definitely are ready. So I've given the order for both of my fleets to sit here. Their fleet power is pathetic compared to ours. They're not going to like what's about to happen to them. The Elbacon colony has a housing shortage and no amenities, so that is a clear opportunity to build a city district there. Special project complete. Not going on. Once the ship drifting by E9RT-668 was towed out of the debris, we were able to send in an away team to investigate. They uncovered a murder scene. Only one crew member has been found, a long-eared amphibian biped who appears to have been stabbed repeatedly. With its crew evidently dead, the ship is now up for grabs. It is fitted with very efficient thrusters, the structure and design of which are beyond us at present. The vessel is not armed, seemingly having been used as a transport for important personnel. Repurposing it into an exploration vessel would be a minor undertaking. However, if we deconstruct it and study the engines in greater detail, we may instead be able to apply its ingenious design to our own fleets. Tear it down and study the engines gives us better sublight speed as a modifier. Yes, absolutely. That is such a great option every time it pops up. All right, so it looks like we are... Do you have the order to auto-survey after this? You don't. All right, I want you to study these systems first. And then I want you to auto-explore. So far, I haven't had too much cause to use the new auto-exploration auto exploration options. But I imagine that that is something that will change. Okay, so... Just going to wait for the first star order to arrive because I, I want to assume that whatever they throw at me, another archaeological site, same system in Olcott. Wow. Two archaeological sites here. Fantastic. I'm going to assume that whatever they throw at me is, is going to, I mean, they're going to defend themselves as hard as they can. Why wouldn't I assume that? Just because it says their fleet power is pathetic compared to mine doesn't mean that I'll actually be able to uh, defeat them easily. I don't want to assume that on this difficulty level. So star system charted. All right. Tile blockers done. Oh boy. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get faster society research. It's time for that. As much as I would like more naval capacity, the option has not popped yet. However, I can build some strongholds. Hmm. Hmm. That might be one thing to do. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to build a stronghold on the de the uh, Delnik colony, which is our central planet in the tier system. Just to increase naval cap a little bit we aren't actually going to be able to increase that naval cap until someone takes that job and there's not a job opening right now. I don't typically, you know, build on planets like that until there's a clear need for a job. But in this case, similar to my thinking for secured. when I build a work district when there's a housing shortage, it's like, okay, I'm going to create a job opening that will be filled as soon as a pop is available. All right, so we have cloaking technology now, which is amazing. Uh, yes, quantum energy states. Energy credits from technicians. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we need that right now. 
We need that yesterday. Okay, fleets are in position. Let's do this. They are still pathetic compared to us. We are going to declare war. Now, we could go ahead and... We could vassalize them. While they're this weak, assuming that we're able to defeat their initial defensive fleets, it might be possible. Because they're pathetic compared to us right now, you know? You know what? We're going to try and subjugate them, just outright. The only, the only downside is that... I mean, a status quo piece, if the subjugation didn't work out, would still give us the systems we have claims on. So... If we weren't able to fully subjugate them, we could potentially still take the systems, I believe. It's honestly been a while since I've been this aggressive in Stellaris. So, I genuinely don't remember. So, we're going to find out. Let's uh, let's go ahead and just declare war with... Yeah, I don't want to make them a tributary. I want to vassalize them. So. We have declared war to safeguard our interests. Yes, we have. All right, so let's go ahead and hit them as hard as we can with everything we've got. Yes, I have cloaking technology. We're not going to use it yet. Anomaly found. A colossal impact crater hints that something big collided with the surface of this planet once. Let's go ahead and research that. All right, so our war declaration has gone through. It's time to hit these systems with all we've got. I'm going to stay on speed one for a moment. And life is about to get interesting. Technology secured. What's this? Railgun. Oh, of course. <laughs> of course, railgun research finishes right as I declare war. Uh, I hadn't noticed that wasn't done yet. Okay, well, honest mistake. Let's go ahead and... Yeah, engineering research improvement. Definitely need that as soon as possible, especially given that that seems to be somewhat slow. I may be able to get this upgrade done in the midst of the fight. And if their fleet power is truly pathetic That's compared to ours... Assets. Asteroid collision. A large mineral-rich asteroid collided with Ruinum 4 at some point during the previous thousand years, and what must have been a major impact event, an abundance of minerals can now be found at, on the planet in the vicinity of the impact crater. A fortuitous event. Alright. I want you to follow the second fleet, okay? Alright, so we control this system. They're following the second star order. Let's go ahead and hit this station because it's one of their more powerful ones. And it also will kind of guarantee that anything they send in my direction has to come to this station. So if we can defeat the station now before they can get defenses in place, so much the better. Attacking enemy assets. Ooh. Those lasers. Nice and powerful. Star All right, excellent. Charted. I'm going to give the order to reinforce. Okay, and you're still... F no, you should be following. Yeah, this, this is a bug that's been happening. It happened in... I don't think it happened in recorded play. Maybe it did, but it definitely happened in solo play. When you have a fleet that's following another one, they will break off. I don't know how widespread this is known in the community. I haven't been on forums recently, so it's possible it's actually very well known, but it's happened in some other gameplay as well. So notice that the fleet that I ordered to follow the second fleet was no longer doing so. All right, so there are some planets that I can take, but frankly, I would rather take control of some more systems first because it'll help economically and it will put a little bit of uh, pressure on their war effort. 
Ruler election. Okay, elections for a new executor are in progress. Spend unity to elect one of the candidates. If we do not interfere, a random candidate will be elected. I kind of like the idea of just letting Candrith continue on. We're going to let Candrith, son of Indri, continue to be executor of the High Dominion of Sindar. I'm going to keep a very close eye on that second fleet because I want to make sure that they are actually following. It's been very clear that that's enemy assets. not always the case. Yeah, see? See? Immediately. And that's really quite frustrating. So basically what this means is that I'm going to have to give them independent orders. I can't... I have to give them, you know, separate orders, basically, to, like, travel together, which I don't typically like to do because I want my fleets to truly move together. And currently that's... it doesn't seem to be possible. All right, I'm going to try and take some additional territory from them. I could split my fleets up right now. Encounter in Glitterum. We've made first contact with mysterious aliens in the Gliderum system. Gliderum, Gliderum. For now, we have codenamed them Omicron Menace until we can find out more about them. If they possess a language, we should decipher it so that we can assess how much of a threat they pose. Interesting. So, we have met the Omicron Menace. Feti, daughter of Etha. You are our envoy to investigate that. So it does seem there are some aliens down here, which is kind of expected. Also, we finally have some additional stuff that can be built. Oh, nice. Ruinum is fully explored. Yeah, I've finally got some stuff to do. Holy crap. Also, what are you doing? Okay, we haven't fully surveyed here yet. Why don't you... I've got to redo this now, because the order is all out of whack. I had a auto-explore order queued up at the end of that. There we go. Now, auto explore. All right, so we're just going to have to keep a close eye on wherever their fleets may be. Anomaly found. Efforts to map the surface of this planet have identified a strange mountain range in the southern hem in the southern hemisphere. It does not appear to be or appear to have formed naturally. All right, that's in the Kraz system. We're starting to have food shortage issues, which is kind of a problem. Attacking enemy assets. Continuing to explore over here. Our scientists have discovered something rather monstrous. The mountain range they scanned earlier was actually the outer membrane of a gigantic egg. It's uncertain what behemoth could lay such an egg and what horror could hatch from it. Uh, crack it open. Always fun to do that, right? Research project. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? All right, we have some debris, some debris in Ushakaran. I hadn't noticed that till just now. How? Hang on, let's look at this. Oh, they actually have a pretty big garrison on that planet. Holy crap. All right, well, taking their planets might prove a little bit troublesome. Because that, Attacking enemy that garrison is stronger than anything I have right now. Even than my army that I've already built. Okay, now, yeah, food is the most important thing. We need to make sure we don't run out of food. But also, energy continues to be a bit of a problem as well. So I'm going to split my effort here. We're going to do a new generator district and a new farming district to address these fresh opportunities. Found. Tier 6 has been terraformed into an alpine world. Efforts to map the surface of this planet have identified a strange mountain range in the southern hemisphere does not appear to form naturally. Didn't we just get that event? <laughs> Maybe this is a different version of it. All right, so... Let's go ahead and colonize this planet. We will call it the Kelnik Colony, which fits with the naming scheme of the tier system already. Technology secured. 
nice. Okay, that'll help. Attacking enemy whoa, 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 pause. <laughs> it continues to happen. Like, I'm, I'm unpausing out of habit, which is doing the opposite because the game is already paused when it, or I'm unpausing out of habit thinking that I'm pausing. Put it that way. That's, that's going to happen a good bit for the next few episodes until I really have this new autopause that I built into the game under control because it's very handy to have that, but my habits are still working with the old expectations. All right. F yeah, let's go ahead and do physics research improvements as well. We've got the other ones in those categories queued up. Construction complete. So far, no resistance from these guys. We're taking all of their systems. Encounter in Eum. We have made first contact with mysterious aliens in the Eum system. Uh, okay, well, they're finally, I guess, there are some aliens down here. In he Like here, though? They must just be exploring. Or it's the crystalline. Okay, yeah. We have codenamed them the Gimel Menace until we can find out more about them. Yeah, crystalline entities. Chopper's contacts. Trag, daughter of Thub. <laughs> Love the names. This new name scheme is working out pretty well. All right, I'm going to send the first Star Order to Rastaban to take that system. I'm going to have the second Star Order stay here. Space life -form encounter. First contact aborted. Our first contact uh, process with the Omicron Menace has been aborted Attacking as they no longer process. exist. I'm sorry, what? Gigantic Skeleton. What was previously thought of to be assorted mountains in the th in the southern hemisphere of Chort 6 have been identified as the massive skeletal remains of a single colossal alien life form. The bones have been dated as 3.4 billion years old, but our scientists have ruled out that Chort 6 could have supported life on that scale at any point in the planet's history. Science Officer Gitu, son of Baga, has prepared a special project to delve further into this mystery. All right, Sindar Prime has a job opportunity, and we are going to respond with a generator district. All right, so one of the alien entities that we've discovered no longer exists at all, which is interesting. Uh, we do not have the minerals currently to build those stations, but now we do. Excellent. Additional construction ships on the way. This is going decently well so far. I'm just wondering where their actual navy is. You know? Because so far, we're taking all of their territory with no problems. Construction complete. Yeah, this is this is going absurdly well. Available uh, available leader traits. Who's that? Oh, whoa! Wait, all of you, or just one of you? All right, so neither of those will work. Hang on, I'm gonna let me see if I can go for one that. I assume that I don't actually have new traits to give all three of these. If I do, that's amazing. Terraforming speed plus 15% and clear blocker cost minus 10%. Or archivist 2. This would improve archaeology skill across the board and improve scientist experience gain across the board. Uh, yeah. Oh, I love I love physics focus too, but I'd rather have archivist 2. World Shaper is great. I love that as an option. Oh my god, they really do all have choices. Holy crap. All right, Satu, daughter of Nock, the Minister of Defense. You're currently leading the first Star Order. I like the idea of giving her strategist. Although aggressor, I think is the best choice right now, given that we're in the middle of a war. Let's go that route. And then Kandrath definitely has an option. He can't do anything with these options, unfortunately. But if he gets outvoted, 
Yeah, urbanist. Empire, si empire size from districts will be reduced. Building upkeep will be reduced and district upkeep will be, will be reduced. If he gets outvoted or if I'm not able to keep him as the executor, then that particular trait will be very useful. Okay, we are at the 35 minute mark and things are going well. A little bit too well. Tell you what, let me... I'm going to send the first star order, the second star order really, to catch up with this group here. All right, they're together now. Let's attack Runa, because we're approaching their capital system, and nothing has stopped us. So we might be able to just take their capital right now. But I assume that they'll have fleets somewhere close. I assume that there's a fight coming. There has to be. Yeah, their fleet power is pathetic compared to us. They might have been... Special project complete. Are they at war with someone else? They are rivals with someone else, so they might have had a war with someone else that weakened them. All right. Our continued studies of the massive skeletal remains on Short 6 have managed to shed some light on how the creature ended up on the planet. There are very faint residual energy readings that indicate some kind of dimensional portal existed briefly towards the rear of the skeleton. Science officer Gitu, son of Bogget, theorizes that the creature passed through the gateway from another dimension only to, only to quickly perish in the hostile environment of Chort 6. Why it did this and where it came from are questions that may never be answered. Astounding. What's this? Leader leveled up. Gitu, son of Baga. Okay, so you're currently an archaeologist. This is our veteran researcher, though. So you're not a counselor. So yeah, let's just give you Explorer. That's the obvious choice for, for Gitu there. All right, very important moment here. Yeah, see, this is the problem. The first sh fleet is arriving ahead of the second one. Construction. That's why I wanted... I, I'm going to have to really mind how I do this. All right, this station is... Uh... Wow. Wow, this is going surprisingly well. All right, I'm going to give orders... I'm going to have the second star order move first. All right, and now I'm going to send the order. All right, see, now they're kind of moving together. Enemy presence exposed. Wait. Attacking enemy vessels. You're down there? That's a mistake. Spaceborne rifle encountered. So their fleet was... They decided to come around to the bottom of my empire. Meanwhile, I'm at their capital. They're going to regret that a lot. I'm, I might be able to just kind of ignore the presence of that fleet. We'll see. It didn't look like a strong fleet either, so. Veeler, an extremely powerful subspace entity of some kind, has been encountered in the Olfete system. It does not appear hostile and may not even be fully aware of conventional spacecraft. But its mere presence in Olfete is causing massive subspace disturbances in the entire system. These, disturb these disturbances excuse me, are localized around the entity itself and should disappear when it leaves the system. While it does not acknowledge hails, the entity is continuously emitting a complex pattern of tachyon pulses which appears to be a form of language. If our translation software is correct, it is saying over and over, Velar seeks, Velar finds. This will interfere with ship systems. Alright, so this is over here though. I'm not worried about there. I'm just, I just want to hit their capital. Under attack. All right. So they are down here attacking our planets. They're attacking Rankshan. And if I'm not careful here... Let me see what else I can do. I kind of want to get my construction ships out of the line of fire. Just to be safe. Yeah, but the thing is... This is their capital. <laughs> they don't even have that strong of a garrison. And uh, I'm going to bring my army in to take their capital from them first. So we're at the 39 minute and 30 second mark. I'm going to stop here. But in the next one, they're not going to like what happens to Wifrid 2. Uh, it's it's not going to be pretty, and there are some additional you know systems in the area that have planets as well, which are likely to fall to me. But this is a subjugation war. I'm surprised. Mm. 
this game. <laughs> I mean, I guess the war exhaustion settings might be different. They might have some bonuses helping them. But the fact that our war exhaustion scores are so close together when I am just literally running all over them. Granted, I haven't taken any colonies. I'm about to. But the fact that that is only at 34 and mine's already at 25 baffles me a little bit. It's like, do you see what I'm doing? I just charged in and took everything unchallenged. And you want to tell me their war exhaustion is still only 34 and mine's up to 25 already. Why is mine at 25? I mean, I guess there have been some losses in combat, but not that many. It's interesting. Anyway, <laughs> that's a discussion to continue in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this one, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. If it's not your first time or even your second, look for the join button to access unique emotes, badges, and other perks. New episodes are coming out every day at 3 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, and comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time.